This is a mechanism of disease map for COVID-19, which is short for Coronavirus Disease 2019. I'll be discussing the etiology, the pathophysiology, and the manifestations of COVID-19. As in all of these flowcharts, each of the boxes is color-coded according to this legend in the top right, and I'll be clearing each of the boxes and talking through them one by one as we repopulate the flowchart. Let's go ahead and get started. COVID-19 is caused by a virus, and the virus is called SARS-CoV-2, which is short for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. We found that this is an enveloped, non-segmented, positive strand, single-stranded RNA, beta coronavirus, and it can be transmitted in a few different ways. It can be transmitted via inhalation of droplets, inhalation of aerosol particles, which makes it an airborne transmission, and also via mucous membrane contact. For instance, if you touch someone that has the virus and then you touch your mouth, touch your eyes, pick your nose, you can transmit COVID that way as well. <clears throat> In any case, when it's transmitted, the viral protein, the viral spike protein binds to the epithelial membrane protein ACE2, and this sets off the invasion of the host cell. So once that spike protein is bound to ACE2, the transmembrane protease serine 2 activates the spike protein and membrane fusion occurs. So you have uncoating of the viral RNA and the cellular enzymes release viral components into the host cell. This begins the replication cycle and eventually once the um, cellular enzymes release the replicated viral components there are endosomes inside the host cell with newly constituted viruses that are released via exocytosis and those viruses can then repeat this process bind to new epithelial cells with membrane protein ACE2 and the infection perpetuates within the host. Now, there are a couple ways that this damages the host, and there are a couple ways that this leads to manifestations. Firstly, the replication cycle itself can be very damaging. This can be directly cytopathic, directly cytotoxic, particularly on the alveolar epithelium. Of course, if you're taking over a host cell and using its machinery to make your own viral particles, that's gonna be quite damaging to the host cell. So that's one way that you have damage, direct cytotoxic effects. In addition, this whole invasion and direct cytotoxic effect both activate the immune system. This leads to a release of many different types of cytokines, including TNF, IL-1B, IL-6, and all of that causes an acute inflammatory response. And in some cases, in severe cases, you can have a cytokine storm as well. And this is where many of your manifestations will come from. Now this whole incubation period from binding to ACE2 to having these symptoms usually lasts about five days. And we found that the incubation period can last from two to 14 days, so quite a long range. And newer variants of COVID-19 have also decreased this incubation period. <clears throat> now, before we go into the manifestations, and there are many, let's talk briefly about the risk factors for severe disease. Everybody can catch COVID-19, but there are certain categories, certain diseases, certain subsets of people that are more likely to have severe disease. These are all listed here. Age has been found to be the biggest risk factor, especially in people equal to or over 65 years of age. People with current or a history of cancer are predisposed to severe disease. Cardiovascular disease is a risk factor. This includes coronary artery disease, heart failure, and cardiomyopathies. Cerebrovascular diseases as well. This is strokes, chronic kidney diseases, lung diseases, including cystic fibrosis, interstitial lung disease, pulmonary embolisms, pulmonary hypertension, and COPD are all risk factors. Liver diseases like cirrhosis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, alcoholic liver disease, and autoimmune hepatitis are all risk factors for severe COVID. Diabetes mellitus, both type 1 and type 2, that's both the metabolic syndrome type 2 and the autoimmune type 1, are all risk factors. Significant uh, overweight or obesity with a BMI of 30 or more is a risk factor. Current or recent pregnancy, current or former smoking, concurrent or previous tuberculosis infection, and immunosuppression is a risk factor. And immunosuppression can come from a variety of sources, such as HIV AIDS, immunosuppressive medication, and patients who have had organ transplants who are also likely on immunosuppressive medications. All of those are risk factors for severe COVID-19. 
Now let's talk about the manifestations of COVID. It can often be asymptomatic, and this is especially common in children or young people that have asymptomatic infection of COVID-19. And they can still be infectious, they can still transmit the disease to other people, even though they are asymptomatic. Many of the symptoms of COVID-19 are also common to <clears throat> other symptoms of flu or typical cold symptoms from a rhinovirus, from other coronaviruses, or from adenoviruses, for instance. This includes fever, cough, shortness of breath or dyspnea, fatigue, sore throat, runny nose, um, rhinitis, inflammation in the nose, um, headaches, myalgias, muscle pains, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and loss of appetite. Some other symptoms are more prevalent with COVID-19 than with um, previous colds or previous flus. Um, this includes a loss of smell or taste, which has always been possible with some uh, viral infections in the nasal passages, but it seemed to be more prevalent with COVID-19. And there's also a COVID conjunctivitis that became quite prevalent. So that's um, that's another possible manifestation. There are some acute complications that are definitely worth knowing. If somebody is going to pass away from COVID-19, it's not usually due to these symptoms themselves. It's usually due to a complication, one of which we're going to talk about now. You can be predisposed to thrombotic events. This includes stroke and pulmonary embolism when you have COVID-19. Hypoxemic respiratory failure is a major risk as you have all of this congestion and inflammation <coughs> going on in your lungs. Acute respiratory distress syndrome is another major problem. You can have that large inflammatory reaction, sometimes with a concurrent cytokine storm. Septic shock is possible. You can have a viremia from COVID-19. Cardiac disease can be precipitated by COVID infection. This includes ischemic heart disease causing heart attacks, for instance, as well as exacerbation of heart failure. And acute kidney injury can result as well. You can have decreased blood flow to the kidneys, which damages the kidneys. Lastly, it's worth mentioning the post-acute syndrome after COVID-19. This is sometimes called long COVID, and we're still beginning to understand what exactly it entails. Some guidelines vary, but the one that I found says that this is when symptoms persist for at least four weeks. And typical symptoms of long COVID can include fatigue, joint and muscle aches, chest pain, chest palpitations, shortness of breath, cognitive impairment, mood changes, headaches, and persistent loss of smell and taste. So this has just been a brief overview of COVID-19. I hope it's been helpful. Um, it's been uh, nice to see how the, the knowledge of the disease has, has evolved, and this hopefully distills some of the basic pathophysiology for us to understand it um, from a mechanistic standpoint. Thank you for listening.